Okay. Okay. Um, and that's, Mr. Donovan, do you want to do that? I do indeed. I am happy to share with the Wilkinsburg School District community that our colleague, Amanda Barber, has been accepted into the PhD program in community, one of the millennial kind of majors, community engagement, something at Point University. <laughs> 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 Congratulations, Amanda. Thank you so much. Summer school, just to let you guys know, summer school started, started on Monday, it runs to August 3rd. ESY begins July 5th and runs through August 3rd as well. Um, today, we, you know, we've met a few times this month. I got to know uh, Deb Frank well. She was supporting us through our, our federal program, Title I funding and so on. Uh, so I've, today was our, my third meeting this month with her. Our team's second meeting this month with her, but I know her team's been meeting with her all year long. Um, unfortunately, she's you know she's retiring again, so we won't have her next year. But we did meet as a team today, and uh, with everybody's support, uh, we we got the consolidated grant application filed today. So yay! Congratulations! Uh, so Thank you all for everybody who worked on that. Uh, yeah, it was a, couldn't do without that team back there. Um, and, and then Paul also helped give us some of the numbers that we need to get as well. Um, just some things on maintenance, uh, just to let you know that we do have the maintenance right now. We had some issues in some of our rooms upstairs. So while some of our staff is out, we do have some maintenance staff going in and addressing some of, some of the concerns that we have, uh, spackling, cleaning, and so on, uh, sanding. So uh, not all of them, but a few of them. We also have the maintenance. Uh, uh, Rachel and Carrie has had our main working with the AIU, and you're going to hear about the entry program. You've already heard about it in the committee, but approving it, hopefully approving it tonight. Um, but some of the things about enhancing our core instruction and some of the stuff that we already have, we found out will still work. <laughs> and we have some good materials that are still at the high school. So they've instructed the maintenance to go ahead over there and start collecting those. And, we're, and they're going to take two days, dress down, and go through everything. And, um, start sorting. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> let me know when you're doing it, and I'll yeah, July 12th. July 12th. <laughs> <laughs> July 12th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm away that week. Oh. <laughs> 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 we can reschedule. 
guys will work when you, when you get back. <laughs> so the good thing is right now we don't have to go out and buy any new programs. We have the program there. Um, we just want to make sure it's consistent pre-K through six that we're using the core grades program that we have right now. Um, I sent the board today, if you got to see, uh, just to let you know about House Bill 1432, Senate House Bill 795, that Lifeline Scholarship Program about vouchers. That is concerning. Um, whether they like the states may not take away from public schools. Um, I think probably may take away from public schools. So I also think I sent a follow-up email too, where you can actually just click and send something back to representatives and so on. So something to think about. Thank you. Um, Easy to do. Yeah, and I appreciate you keeping us abreast of that. Um, I was reading that last night myself, just, you know, shaking my head. And I think if there's anyone in the public that's watching this as well, um, take a look at that and contact our legislators because that is not a bill that will help our schools. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. There's another one that uh, talking about about the tuition costs and things like that, trying to address that with cyber charters too. But it's just, we were just having this discussion. It's just, it, again, we, we need to salvage what we can get and get it safe. We just feel like it's going to take away. So um, last thing I just want to, I just want to say, I appreciate with, with everything going on, we've, we've, I want to thank the academic admin team. It's been a tough two months, you know, with not having summer on staff and, They've all covered down on over the last two months, and I appreciate that with the academic team, the principals, and Jeanette. Um, it's, it's been challenging, um, but also now with the added, uh, you know, with the business manager situation we have going on, I also want to thank Debbie. Um, we've spent a lot of time together. I can say, of you know, working in five school districts and, and um, being with hundreds of board members over the years, you know, it's hard to find a board member that understands finance and accounting. So we got lucky. Uh, sometimes divine intervention, maybe that's what it was at the time, but I appreciate spending a lot of time over the last few weeks. Nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we had a really heavy yeah. and we all appreciate what you brought down. Yeah, thank you. But the whole team here, I have to give it, you know, they're really working very hard and I mean, it's Saturdays, you know, evenings, whatever. It's uh, they're very flexible here. So, thank you. Yeah, well, we appreciate. It. She keeps us in line. That's for sure. When yeah, my that. husband says his sympathies, though. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, we've addressed some things that you know that's been important to address. So, um, tighten it up a little bit. So, I think we're good to go. Great. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. So we move on to presentations, and this we have been waiting for this to hear. Um, and I am so excited to have some of our high school students from Westinghouse, and so that we can hear about the college tour that you went on, because we were excited to help, you know, fund that for you and the opportunities. And we'd love you just to share your experiences with us, uh, Doctor Paul. Oh, yeah. um, should I stand up? Yeah. 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 yeah, I feel like my back is against people. My phone. Yeah, you come on up. So, uh, we'll go up. Yeah, you come on up. You guys, come on the phone. Uh, with the many hats back here, you know, around Westinghouse, I can tell you that I have five paid jobs at Westinghouse that I hold. Uh, so, those things go you know, concurrently. A lot of times, I'm also the athletic director in the building of the department chair, um, the lead counselor, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, with those things, part of my job, not only my job, but my passion is driven in and really creating opportunity for students. Are we noticed that inequities that happen with our students along the years? Me, I was a counselor at Older Rice for five years before I transferred to the Western House. When I was at Older Rice, it was kind of an eye-opening eye experience to be able to see what students are allowed, right? And crossing the bridge or crossing the road two miles down the road, what our students aren't allowed. So the college tour came through a process of me going through my junior presentations, in which I do every single year, getting students uh, ready and geared to go into their senior year, going through course selections, and the college uh, process and so on and so forth. With that, um, I kind of did a, a soft survey to those students uh, at the beginning of the year saying, hey, 
how many guys have been on college campus. And out of the six classes that I did, there were only three hands of a race. So out of these three hands of a race, instantly my gear started going forward. And I started to say, I, I can't sit in this. Um, the, the inequity part starts to push through my, my veins, and I just kind of jump out of the way. So it actually started last year. Last year, on my own, I fundraised. I put my own dollars to it. I um, solicited uh, funds from a lot of friends and was able to take our first class of students on to the, uh, the HBC College Fair. From that class, we've had a student be accepted to each each of those schools and deferred from one of them um, to the schools that we visited last year. So that kind of started the ball rolling. St. Mayor was a sophomore last year, but uh, we were able to take, we just took juniors for purposeful reasons. Um, they made very, very close to me, and I, I keep them close to my, my head. Uh, something that resonates with him that I've seen for myself, full of transparency, I know his mom's about like kindergarten, first grade. So, and she's one of those parents, right? She's one of those parents to me when she walked in on campus. Uh, he wasn't even, he, as a sophomore, he wasn't my student. I'm a junior and senior counselor. Uh, but at the time, I was the athletic director, and she's like, hey, where's his schedule? First thing, and then it's August. We're not even, schedules aren't even done yet. So I was like, hey, I'll have it for you by Friday. Friday comes, oh, I don't have a schedule. What's going on? <laughs> so from that point on, when we had our discussion about expectations at Westinghouse, I made a promise to her. I made a promise not only to give my, my, my soul and my spirit and gave the same passion that I've given to those students at Odorex when we make groundbreaking things happen to the students at Westinghouse. And I told her I promised I would start with her son. I will start with her son to make sure that he becomes the leader that we need him to be, but more importantly, that he leaves a mark on our building, that going forward, the students will have a, a, a blueprint to follow. So for that reason, last year he was the first sophomore to go on the tour because I wanted him to be able to be a leader on this year's group. So as such, come this year, St. Mary's and I started in September. Uh, him and I, he's my faculty assistant, him and I sat almost every day going through this process countless of emails, I would say hundreds of calls, uh, soliciting uh, support, funds, looking everywhere to make it bigger and better, uh, to make sure that we had the experience to be as cheap as possible for students. We did recognize that having students be, have some aspect of our financial uh, responsibility was important, but more importantly, being able to provide whatever we can above and beyond. So that means designing shirts. You can start from designing shirts and design hoodies to to purchasing, to picking up, to having the meetings, um, all those things is what he kind of leans into as my faculty assistant along this journey. Um, but Andrea, it's important that not only that she's here because to me now she represents what's the greatest to come. Right now she sits at the, at the top academic, uh, the, the valedictorian in her class. So. What we have noticed within our space, within my, my career, 15 years of education, is that sometimes when we a valedictorian only you can see, only gets to where they can actually touch or tangible or tangible. So it was important that she was on this tour and that you guys, with your support, was able to make things minimal for her and the rest of her cohort of, of students to make sure that she's able to touch and say, "You Maryland looks like this." To me, that was my first time at U Maryland's campus when I was a adult and we took care of the whole rest. I was like, wow, this is heaven. This is this is this is the most beautiful campus I've ever seen. From that moment on, I wanted to make sure that our students, students who look like us, students who, who come from our background, um, and I'm not talking color, I'm, I'm talking culture. Students of our culture are able to see and touch what U Maryland feels like, to see and touch what Howard feels like, to see and touch what Simple feels like, to see and touch what Lincoln and Cheney um, and Coppin State and Morgan State and uh, Howard and uh, Bowie State. All these schools that we've seen over the last, this year, was much bigger than last year. We've almost three days. Like we, we continue to push forward, and one thing I can say, regret, regretfully, Dr. Joe and I were on a call this morning, um, about other aspects of what happened to Westinghouse. 
we understand that there's some level of disconnect that we need to make sure we start to bridge that gap. And that gap just can't be bridged in, in time to be, but it needs to be an aggressive and proactive state so, so we can make sure that these things happen so steadily and keep, and it, it goes beyond us, right? It goes beyond our work. It goes beyond Dr. Joe's time at home. It goes beyond my time at Western House. It's sustainable beyond our work. Our work, I should say, right? It should, that's so <coughs> going forward. Um, I would love uh, you guys to be an integral part of meeting the students, building actual programming of college readiness. So it's not like, hey, here's just money, because I don't want them. I can raise them. I can raise the money. I promise you, if I have to spend my last dollar in the state, we're going to have to spend the same thing. So without the funds. My job and my hope is to have a partnership. So without my funds, without my direct support, that we all need, that this thing is sustainable and lives off the perpetuity. To do that, we need true partnership. To do that, we need a partnership between you guys, President of other community people, um, and everyone who else who is invested into these things. I think the separation has to start the end, and I think it starts with this type of agenda, this type of process, this type of vision. So, thank you. 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 And his fellow colleagues, he made it fun for us going on scavenger hunts, going, going to Pearl Harbor, just doing things of that nature, like White House. Some of us never seen the White House. So it was like, it was really just a great experience while we were also networking with the people from admissions, people from colleges, even the students. Like we were talking to the students, Coach so all sat there and talked to the students with us. It was like, we just, we just got to experience which like some of us don't never get to experience. And I just think it was a great opportunity. Yeah. I like to point out some here the 3.5 GPA back there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out, Coach. Uh, we did every guy three t shirts and three hoodies for the college school. We did everybody in Western House from here. You know what I'm saying? We took that one in Western House. <laughs> he gave us $20 each day if we didn't have money for it, too. So, so. Thank you. Thank you. so, I'm on Joya. Um, I'm Joya Evans. And for me, the college tour, that was like an eye opener for me because me, I'm a part of the Pittsburgh Farmers. So, we do the college tours throughout the year. And the college tour that I was here to officiate, it was like, that was new for me because I never actually stepped outside of PA to look at other schools. And like you said, the fun, that scavenger hunt down at the, um, the oh. Harvard, <laughs> it was so challenging. We made it tough because like, the time capsule, and we were like, okay, was, what are we doing? <laughs> but um, I mean, even to like the hotel rooms, the like, fun part, we all sat. I was probably the first time that like, we actually all sat together as a, a class of 24. I mean, we were tight. We had good conversations just sitting in the hallway. Um, and then the schools, so, like University of Maryland, that was like a self guided tour. But I mean, there were like students sitting outside this point. I think they were campaigning or fundraising. But we went up to them and they became like our self-appointed tour guides. They were telling us all about the school. Um, we got to do, I mean, the tours itself, they were really nice. The schools were really nice. I was something personally, like at first, when sitting here, like, you know, I took food, I was definitely jealous. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this year, it was, it was definitely worth it. It was, like, I enjoyed myself. The schools were nice. And it definitely helped me step I'm not perfect in this Yeah, I was just wondering if you could, um, as the valedictorian, congratulations, that's a wonderful thing. And that 3.5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were any of the schools that you tour uh, of, of interest to you? Any of the ones that will you be applying to? Um, so I plan on applying at either college.
Hamilton and Infinity, mm -hmm. but then I also really like the University of Maine's campus. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. And what attracted you to that campus? Um, so, uh, University of Morgan, their, their campus to me, it was like so, like it was so peaceful. Um, they had this nice, like, it was huge, but it was like a waterfall fountain. And I was with my friends, I was like super excited over that. And they were like, it's not that serious. I went for like peace, like peace. And so nice. that's what definitely attracted me. University of Maine for sure. Um, and then Coffee Maine, um, that's what it's um, I feel like it was more so Tory Guy that got me. He was, so, he was full of energy, and I like that sometimes. <laughs> um, but he, he was definitely very convincing with that school. Did you get to experience any classes? Did you, were you able to sit in on any classes? No, no. Um, the, I feel like some of the schools they would do like right, so the budget. Right, so a promise you guys we didn't plan it this way. It just so happened like every school that we're going to at the time they were like giving them probate to their sororities or fraternities oh, wow. and then <laughs> open house. Yeah. It just it, it just so happened to fall that way. And, <laughs> so every time yeah. we were like that's kind of what the state that we were in, I think um uh, Kenny maybe showed us a few classrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Temple, yeah. Temple, we had a you know a few buildings that you know we went into into the senior side, but for the most part, when we were on HBCU campus, it was like that time of the year. Mm -hmm. you know, we were watching PhD graduation happen, or we were watching COVID happen. It was it was amazing time. And what about your schools? Which one would you like? Uh, we about the African American history with them. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that was fun. <laughs> but my school, I'm more of a football guy, so I'm leaning towards Temple, Howard, and Morgan. But those are only the schools that contacted me and are interested in me. Like, <laughs> so that's where I'm leaning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, like, that was a two story. Right before the Temple, I think the week before is when his uh, coach contacted him. Yeah, and it's through the recruitment process that we can have a Morgan texted me the same day that we was at Morgan. It was like all the blessing. Yeah. So did you guys enjoy uh, uh, doing the probation? The probation. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything piqued your interest in particular? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe next year, I'm an HBC graduate of Clark Atlanta University. I say it all the time. Have my sister in law is Delta State, my nephew's at Oakwood, and most of my friends are family, North Carolina a &T. So I'm excited that you guys have been. I know Andrea's. You're going to major in micro but biology, right? Biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering. That's pretty awesome. Um, I'm hoping I get a teacher here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I did want to be a math teacher until I took pre calc. <laughs> 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 it's, it's just, that's teacher, teacher Alexander, right? Yeah. 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 Teach elementary math. <laughs> I just wanted to say subject <laughs> there. I want to study in kinesiology. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. That could be the business school too. I, just yeah. real quick, you know, we used to fund uh, when we had our high school. We funded trips to the HBCUs, you know, for students. That, and I'm sorry that it took so many years for us to get the on us. Wait, our kids just aren't in the borough anymore. We still have to support you doing that. I'm sorry that it was only this year, Coach, that, that occurred to us, like pony up. You know what I mean? To help you, help you have those experiences and see those things. So. I'm really glad. I apologize for so long. We're really proud of you. To hear your scores, uh, hear your ambitions and your and your scores, your GPAs makes a lot of us feel really good because when we closed this high school and we partnered with Pittsburgh, some of us took a lot of flack. And it's so good to hear constantly that the Westinghouse kids going to PPS have better attendance. And I'm not rubbing anything in. I'm not talking about PPS. Better attendance and better GPAs and fewer discipline problems. And the core 
then some other things. I think some of the top five or no, no it's, it's good that we were right that, that provided opportunities you know for, for young people and the rest of it will take care of itself and as you know there is this terrible shortage right now of teachers and so if even for a little while you like, tell your friends <laughs> tell your friends you know, if for a little while you're like you want to come back and see what's happening in terms of Kelly or maybe even some big news you know, we would love to have you back Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. We're so proud of you. We're so proud of you. And, and one of the things I know that Dr. Thorpe, when we were planning of our goal, our goals, is we'd like to get more feedback from our students at Westinghouse as to how we can help them, you know, as we, you know, partner with them to, to make things better for you. So, um, and we even thought about having somebody on a representative on our school board. Right? I think that'll be so, nice. so, so our kids. We haven't forgotten. Yeah. There's, there's no hours. I started a, a thing I want to do is a student voice. I don't know if you've ever heard, I know you've probably heard student voice. And I think it's a your first student voice. So it would, and it would be nice to maybe have a small group of student voice from, you know, the Wilkinsburg students that are over there, maybe meet at least twice a year or a board in small groups. Um, maybe you two could help lead that so we can connect on that. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great story. Yeah, we would love that. And I might have one more favor for you guys too. I talked to Coach Griffin or uh, to Coach Griffin already. So um, about I might need you guys to first get back to school. I'll explain later. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hearing stories like this and having them come in and talk, that kind of makes it worthwhile, right? With all the stuff that's going on, and you know, just so appreciate you. Um, so, uh, thank you, Dr. Joe, for following up and getting them to come in. I know that was especially with um, with Summer being out because she had um, coordinated that for us. So. Uh, next up, we have a presentation from our academic team, um, and they have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> they have a plan. I think Jermaine is pulling it up. Where do you want us to speak? It's right here. It's fine, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pulling it up. Where our PowerPoint will be. <laughs> Oh, come on. I'm trying to pull mine up my phone so I can't see. Okay. Just to, um, and we've been discussing this, you know, I brought it up before the committee meetings, but it, looking where we may go, building construction and so on, we think this might be the right time. Um, and that's, the team's going to go ahead and expand on it uh, about moving second grade back to Kelly. Um, for a number of reasons, which we're going to go into, I don't want to rehash it, um, but it, it will make sense for a number of reasons and give us a true primary school building. Uh, so if you guys want to go ahead and the second, next slide. Next slide. All right. Um, there are several benefits to moving a second grade back to Kelly. One of the biggest ones is that most of our programs are primary focus, which covers grades K to two. Um, that includes every letters, which is um, a professional development. Our K to two teachers um, have been participating in the Envision grades stand for primary is K to two, our social emotional curriculum, and the new science standards will be also a K to two grade band. Um, so that would help to have those grades in one school. Um, we could target training for interventionists, um, the special area teachers who will be supporting those programs and the regular classroom teachers. Um, we do have increased space because um, of the family center leaving. We would balance our special education caseloads. We have a teacher underutilized at Kelly, which Jeanette's convention. Um, and it would also balance the caseloads for the special area teachers. I think Turner special area teachers barely had a second to breathe last year, and we had some space at Kelly. 
Um, and that goes same for guidance, counselors, coaches, and interventionists, just spreading um, the students out a little bit more equally. Okay, next slide. Okay, so some of the benefits of Turner is very similar to some of the um, things that were said about Kelly, but um, first, um, it will give Turner to be a true testing building, um, grades three to six. So that was a, a big highlight, um, uh, you know, because PSSA occurs only through grades three to six, and the supports um, PSSA scheduling and facilitation. Whereas this year we had to include second grade. Um, and it was a disruption of the schedule, um, but without second grade being there, it would just be truly three to six, which helps scheduling and the overall facilitation of PSSA run much more smoothly. Um, and again, it's just an optimal testing environment. And as uh, Turner, it opens needed space at Turner. Um, as previously planned, it was not in 2019, we did not have a plan for the plot Pride Classroom, Autistic Support, Life Skills, Spanish, and 5th and 6th grade. We had three 5th and 6th grade, now we have four. So this just opens up more um, space in Turner. And like Rachel said, it will balance the special education caseloads, just more equitable across the board. And it's developmentally aged and grade span appropriate. Now we have some second graders with 13 year olds, you know, so the, the grade and age span um, that will be closed with second grade moving back. And um, again, like Rachel said, more equitable support from our guidance coaches and the interventionists. Okay, the next slide. That's it. So, any questions, comments <laughs> for us? I know there was concerns about how is there space at Kelly or is space at Kelly? There's just some moving around we got to do, but those have been identified. Carrie, when the, um, Dr. Harbison, when you split the schools, you know, mm -hmm. Turner in, in second grade was there, right, at Kelly for a while or no? Yes. Yeah, it started That's what I thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that worked well. They moved because of space, I guess, Correct. right? Okay. Because our enrollment had increased at that time. Right. We knew we uh -huh. couldn't fit all of the students, and our, our enrollment numbers kind of remained increased in the lower grades. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense. In, for next school year now, those kids from that kindergarten class are, I'm sure, at Turner now. And yeah, I always thought it was just temporary that we had the second grade at Turner too because of the family support center. I did primary, well, I wasn't primary, but I did a primary intermediate school system and it was pre k to two. Well, there was another yes. reason why Dr. Arverson wanted, I remember, to, to move the second grade there, and we had the, the presentation, but the, there were still going to be plenty of rooms. But the board, as part of, of Ed's committee, Ed and Denny's committee, we went and we actually toured, yeah. and we are cramped at yeah. Turner, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And I think what we didn't do then is we didn't plan for all the special ed needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, did you have the like, autistic support We did time? not have That's the autistic or support. support. Or the pride. Or the Spanish yeah. rooms, or the you know, some classroom. of those. Right, right. right. We pride. didn't have the pride classroom. So um, we didn't. Once we started adding those programs, then we're yeah. out of space. Yeah. Um, and then so it makes sense to me to, to go backwards. How many rooms will be moved around? Or should, I mean, you know, that at Turner? Yeah, I mean, do we need, I guess, do we need uh, extra support with all the moving around? <laughs> that is, this is what worries me. It's a big thing to do to start moving classrooms around, right? So do we need? extra support, staff support, or help, movers, movers. <laughs> I don't think as much as Turner, it's going to be some internal moves. Um, probably, I don't know, but more so getting the second, second grade, grade, getting second really grade over. Right. Right. Actually four teachers. Those are four teachers. Four. Okay. Okay. So there are four four second grades going over. Okay. okay. And then that opens up the rooms for so yeah, we yeah. we'll already have them accounted for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can put the, the steam back in rotation as well. The steam is 
on a cart right now. And we have an office for the assistant principal. I want yeah. to make sure we have that. There we go. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we have to do to the state when we move the, uh, yeah, so yeah. what are the next steps? There? I have to file with the state by the end of July. Okay. So. Okay. And what is it? Do you know what you have to file? Yeah. Yeah. They, we just got an email on it the other day. If there's any school reorganization, um, when to do it, how to do it. So it won't be a problem. Okay. Do we need a board motion? It's or in there. We have a board okay. motion. Yep. Yeah. Not way ahead of you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to get this done here. Um, okay. Um, any other questions? Um, teacher notification. What does that process look like to letting them know the change? I'm, they're probably listening now. <laughs> yes. um, yes. Yeah, yes, tentative letters, assignment letters, would have to be out by the 30th of the month by this Friday this is a tentative okay. teaching assignment okay but once if this is board approved and passed then we will notify everybody individually of the changes in the movement and then I guess two families who yeah. may have had first graders notifying sure. them that their kids will still be at right Kelly for seventh grade next year and that's what they might be so sad to not go to that new renovated I, building I know that's... those kids they might have, they might have been ready Y'all got to talk to kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so that's the next step is is not only notifying the state, but how we communicate yeah. to both the teachers and the yeah. and the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the families. Uh, so, I think on both ends, we'd like to have like a meeting at, one, at the school and invite people to come, mm -hmm. you know, to have like a, not an open house, but over the summer, you know, just to invite parents for questions and answers because people are going to probably have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, so. Yeah. Maybe do like a, a morning time, an evening time, yeah. like give multiple options yeah. because parents. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, one of our goals this year that uh, the board came up for all of the, the district and it was at the top one was communication and how we communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. And we really want to get better at that, right? So it's not at the last minute and we're notifying things and people and whatever, but that we do it in a planned um, and a thoughtful, a thoughtful way. Yes. Yeah. So, great. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay. We'll you. vote on it and we'll see if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next is we do have a budget presentation. It's a short budget presentation, but it is a budget presentation. Um, we have. Can you open the? I don't. I have. Oh wait. Let me see. Okay. I do. I. I uh... Um, we've been going back and forth on the budget, but I think this is the budget that we're that we're going to uh, uh, pass on Thursday. But um, what we have, if we go to the next slide, um, it's actually increased from what we um, what we are draft. Uh, proposal at the um, at the May meeting, our preliminary budget. Um, but actually, Rick and I, I will thank him. He did spend a day working with us on getting the numbers in the new numbers into into the state uh, since last week. Since last week, okay. yes, yes. So thank you. I want to thank him for for that. But we have um, our goals. Our district goals is that we want to increase our student achievement and enrollment. We want to improve our communications. We want to ensure safe and secure and welcoming schools. We want to continue support, supporting the arts, and, uh, the music and arts and the Disney musical. Uh, we want to make data-driven decisions, you know, regular reporting and accountability based upon what the data is telling. And we want to increase parental involvement. Those are the goals that we had talked about, kind of summarized uh, from our uh, board retreats that we've had. And that's what we have basically in our budget. So next slide, please. So what's new? Um, moving second grade to turn or back to from Turner back there. We hope we haven't voted on it, but we hope that that's one of the things that we will be doing. Um, hiring an assistant principal, we, you know, we'll be voting again on that tonight. We hired an HR director that's new for 
this year and uh, the front line expanding front line and to be more efficient in how we handle HR she's already started that process and training and that's going well um, we are looking to pass again tonight um, a contract with effective school solutions for social and emotional support for our students um, we want to enhance our core reading program again with another program that we talked about that went through the curriculum committee with EPRI. The Evolve security system, we're investing a lot of money into, into this to make sure that we keep bad things out of our schools. Um, and then of course our PBIS initiative, we want to revamp that. Um, what's continuing in our budget, we want to continue to main paying small class sizes. We're, we're going to be expanding the number of interventionists that we have. Um, we want to again keep our classroom aids in the kindergarten and enhance that program. Uh, we're in year two of the Envision math program. We'll be in year two of the Disney musical and year three of our Spanish curriculum. And we are happy so far with all of those things. So we want to keep that along with pride. Um, and our social emotional learning curriculum we want to continue to keep keep that current um, with the ESSER fund we're going there's the seven percent set aside that we have to use and we will continue to use those for after school programs summer school learning loss and the social emotional programs and then we hope to use um, the uh, ESSER funds for um, the teacher salaries and benefits tax rate Remain at 24.5 mils, okay? And this is where we wanted to make sure that everyone knew how that is calculated, how we get to our budget. So this just kind of gives you a little bit of a history of our uh, millage rate. If you want to go to the next slide, though, I wanted to make sure that we had an example of our millage rates, how they've gone down over the last six years from 32.63 to 24.5, right? Um, I wish it was, yeah, <laughs> it's there. It's, it's quite, I, I haven't heard of any school districts that have other than Woodland Hills who, who reduced it a half, a half a mil, right? Um, if you go to the next slide though, I thought this actually is something I think for board members to have because this is the impact on a homeowner. So I don't know how people, uh, we hear that they didn't even realize that we reduced taxes, right? <laughs> but um, if you're at the assessed value of your home, and I, I put it in 50,000 uh, increments uh, up to 400,000, because so there are some homes in our community that are selling for over $400,000. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the tax at 32.63, compared to what the tax on that home would be at 24.5, if you're one of those higher end homes, you should be you're saving a, quite a bit of money. Even at the lower value, you're saving hundreds of dollars, you know, and at the higher end, you're saving thousands of dollars. Can we put this on our website? This page? Yes, this page is good. This is really good. I think you just. Yeah, Debbie is. Listen, shout out to Debbie, okay? I just I can't say that enough. Yeah, but, shout out to Debbie. This page is amazing. And it's good for realtors to see this information and to be able to show that too. Yes, if we could share this to like realtors, I think this page is very powerful in this narrative that we know we need to continue to talk about. We know what we're doing, but it's not getting out to the community. And if you just put this on the website, like this page, we can maybe change the colors, go blue and red if we want to. Sure. But, you know, I think this has, it, you got to tell people cut and dry, because even tell them the millage numbers, people don't even understand the mill. Right. Um, I was thinking about that even for that tax insert, if we did something like that too. Yeah, that yeah this show. is good. Yeah, we made it a little bit more room on that. Now, yeah. so keep in mind, we were the highest. The we highest. In Allegheny County. We're now 18th. Yeah. You know, and that's, a, that's a lot. Really and maybe we put time. that too, that, that, that ranking. That's, it. that's already in the, in, yeah. the, in the newsletter, but I think we want, I'd like we to get this. We can put it to, yeah, but, and we'll talk. Okay. Well, yeah, I have a draft for you. Perfect. Hand it over. Um, okay, so anyway, I thought that would be a good slide for us. Our revenue, we're looking at total revenues of about uh, $38,938,675. So, um, and this kind of breaks it down from the local, state, and the federal you know the details but if you look at the next slide 
um, this kind of break gives it the pie, pie chart. And you can see where 50% of our revenues is actually not coming from the state. It used to be, it wasn't that way before. So we, you're lobbying to the state and asking for more funds. It's working. So keep calling and keep fighting going. for all of those state funds. And Ashley will keep, will keep uh, reminding us, and Dr. Joe reminding us when to contact our legislators. So, um, but it, uh, next slide will go to the expenditures. I don't have like the history there too, but I just wanted to break it out what our um, salaries uh, and benefits. Um, and if you look at the 500, just look at the 500 column where it says other purchase services and tuition. And that's like almost $16 million. Um, and, yeah, and so, yeah, so that other purchase services and tuition, that's a lot, uh, most of that is the charter school tuition. We also have our Pittsburgh public school tuition and tuition that we pay also to other, um, you know, the private schools, some of our special needs schools. But that's a huge number for us because those are, a lot of those students, I mean, those students aren't in, in the schools, but we are paying for them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that the public knows that we are still paying for students that yeah that uh, may not be attending in these schools but we're responsible for the that is not the transportation transportation for schools for students that are going outside of our yes we do pay for the transportation is that, is that a that number i don't know no i think, I think it's separate that's a probably different line yeah. but it's in a different line but what i think same with that chart we just had this particular breakdown, I think, is also important to share because we've got to start talking about that, yeah. that how the, our tax dollars are being used. And I did the, the bill that's currently um, the charter school the, tuition. There's a piece of that legislation system. that's also going to um, prevent charter schools from using in their advertisement that it's free because it's not mm -hmm. free. And I think that that is also very misleading language when you're hearing things that's being marketed on TV and radio, um, on our, when you go to the grocery store and you see the things in the shopping cart. Um, and so we don't have money like that to put things in shopping carts, but other schools do. And so I think however we can be, just like the chart, be direct on how much money we're spending. I told one parent before, and I was given a $10 million number from like 2017, when I told them that's what we paid at charter school, they were in shock. So. I think transportation might be in that number too. So that's okay. why it is. It might be. But okay. yeah. Which would make sense though, because um, when we're sending the tuition yeah. for a student, that's including the, the right. Right. Okay. I thought transportation was only a separate thing because of the state reimbursing for so much of that. I it, it is a separate It line is, line. but I'm saying in that object code. It is oh, a separate could be. thing, but it's yeah, in yeah, that I object it, code. No. It, it very well could be. I don't have that open. I should have brought that with me, but I did not. So, um, yeah. And this kind of breaks it out so that you can see again that 500 is the biggest piece of the pot, right? Um, and even if you look at combining the salaries and benefits, they're not as 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 much as that as that piece is. I think that's it. Questions. Please don't ask. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, that was good. Thank you so much. I just, thank you. I don't know what we would do. It was like so good. Mm -hmm. I love it. You made it very, you broke it down, made it simple to understand for everyone. Thank you to my husband. He said, make it simple. <laughs> I love simple. Thank you. That makes good. Okay. And I hopefully this will be the budget that we, that we uh, pass on Thursday. Okay, let's go to committee reports. We've already had them at our planning sessions, but is there any updates for any committee reports for from uh, Kelly Renovation? There are just two documents that uh, that we'll be asking the board to approve tonight, um, and um, that's that's it. Okay. Safety and security did not meet policy. There's I don't think there's any updates for policy uh, curriculum. Uh, we'll, we'll be voting on that. Uh, Amanda, are you there? Amanda? She is I am, sorry, I'm muted. Oh, okay. Uh, um, do you want to just mention, uh, I, we put the ESS contract is up for a vote. It did go through committee, um, but uh, I talked to Amanda about this because it is 
um, a significant contract, we were going to put it on as a separate vote, not as a consent vote, like with the other with the other uh, votes, just if there are any questions or anything like that that people have. Um, public relations and marketing. Yeah, I think the only update is just that uh, Ed has worked on an edit to the tax insert. We, you know, collectively all agree that we want it to look a little more um, less elementary yes in regards to who it's targeted like the imagery and how it's targeted um so we will get that updated and we're also thinking about sending it separately because we're also curious that some people just don't open their tax bill so it, yeah. yeah we considering that we would still have to pay for it by end of it you know by piece with the firm that sends our tax bill we can just spend that money on our own and send it to our own list um, of residents in the borough so we can make sure we're communicating what is happening in our schools. Um, the billboard is up. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. See. It's up. You're going to send that? It's up. It's up. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I want to circle back to this. I'm going to give this to you tonight yeah. for you to check it. Once you and Deb say it's okay, tell me what edits to make. I think we ought to ask the IU to process this professionally and help us with the mailing. They're, they're going to be our new partner for that. It'll be piecework. Oh, we'll pay for it as piecework. But oh, yeah, I guess, let's get it out. yeah, I guess that's another update then that I can, in regards to the AIU, we need to formalize a vote, but we did collectively as a a board meet with the AIU and the services that they provide um, for marketing and PR. It is, you know, a collective group and team of former journalists from TV, print, um, and they have just a very well-rounded uh, comms department that is aligned with our, you know, public schools in our region and what school districts like ours are up against when we are um, ultimately competing with charter schools that have million dollar marketing budgets. So, yeah, that'll be coming up. Great. Thank you. Um, there is no other finance committee reports and the joint tax committee uh, that was scheduled uh, yesterday was canceled. So um, any updates on the uh, parks and recreation? No, okay. okay. Uh, Forbes Road, have we anything new there? We didn't talk about them last week. Uh, uh, Michael's not here, I'm sorry, so he won't be able to. Um, Eastern Area Schools, anything new to report there? Uh, no, there was that report in the form of an email that I sent out last week. I still have to format that, and then I can put it into the, uh, I, we can mark it private so that I can put in some of the legal information that okay. was there that was confidential, and so I, I just, we could just take the email if you want. You don't have to read format or anything. We right. just use the email. I can make a note to to do that. Treasurer's report. This is we're going to have to actually vote. Yeah. Okay. There's Eight there's approval of the minutes. Are you skipping over oh, that? Approval. Oh, approval of the minutes. Yes, I was skipping over that. <laughs> uh, board action is requested to approve the minutes from May 30th, 2023 legislative meeting. So moved, Ed. Second. Thanks, Jimmy. Okay. Amanda, are you uh, able to vote or do you want me to vote for you? Can you vote for me right now? I can vote on the next one. Yes. Yes. Vote yes, please. Okay, motion carries. Treasurer's report. Board action is requested to ratify and confirm the June 2023 general fund payments of $1,330,015.52. Wire transfers for one million two hundred and seventy-four thousand six hundred twenty-seven dollars and twenty-one cents, 
and capital fund payments in the amount of $76,584.20, following reports from May 30, 2023, actually it should be June, right? Should be June 30th, uh, 2023. Will be I made a matter of uh, record for the minutes, cash, profit, and loss oh. balance sheet. Sorry, we that's a bit. Fix. Yeah, <laughs> I fixed it in one place and not the other. We need a board secretary. <laughs> <laughs> so move, Debbie. I'll second that. Denny, did you get all your questions answered that you had? Uh, let's see. Except, except for one, the uh, except for one, you know. the um, having gone back, we talked with the team about the the key charge, the charges of the, or the transportation fees for. Oh right, 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 right. So yes. waiting to hear back from them, but we don't know why we're getting charged for all those. It was for the science kits. There were these transport fees for live biologicals and they kept charging and charging. It seems like they were the same day. I, mean, I was just wondering why if we got multiple charges for transportation. Okay. If I don't hear by noon tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll follow up and then get you by the end of the week. But it seems like we only, they only pick up, they drop off and pick up. I don't see them coming more than drop off and pick up. Unless they charge per kid. Unless they're charging per kid. It but seems I don't know. like that's what they're doing, actually. Hmm. Interesting. But that was a good find because we might be able to get that, get that taken off. off. Okay. <clears throat> then we'll go on to Section G, the personnel items. And we have, I'll let um, Dr. Joe uh, talk about these personnel items. Start with number one. Number one. Um, Number one for the summer education programs, um, we wait, click on the right. Oh, we'll be requesting the board approve Troy Brown, Kenya White, and Melissa Flieger to support the summer education programs at a rate of twenty-five dollars an hour, pending approval of all clearances effective June twenty-six, twenty twenty-three through August third, to be paid for by the NLA agreement and ESSER funds, because the NLA pays for partial part of that. Um. um well, we're, we're going to do that That's as a right, consent, the consent vote, vote. Consent vote. but um, if we want to go down to, we have already talked about those hires, mm -hmm. but I thought one of those teachers was... No, she didn't have to be on there. That's what I called out today. We didn't have to be on there because they're on. Okay, yeah. so that's already been taken yep. off? Okay. Um, so the first one through uh, six, we've already talked about, we've talked about seven. And we've talked about number eight. The ones we haven't talked that we added since planning are number nine, 10, 11, and 12. Um, and that, we're gonna start there with number nine. Okay. Um, on number nine, we'll be requesting the board to approve Megan Flaherty as the elementary assistant principal at a salary of $80,000 pending all clearances effective date, July 1, 2023. Uh, just to give a little background, Megan. Megan is the supervisor um, one of she is a supervisor of the Presley Ridge program, but our pride program she oversees that. Um, she was with Presley Ridge for ten years. Okay. Any questions? Hey, Title Nine coordinator. Uh, board action is requested to approve Jocelyn Pennis as the Title Nine coordinator for the district beginning July 1, 2023. She just did complete her training and certification um, that you guys approved to send her to. Okay, and we have two resignations. Board actions requested to approve the resignation of Paul Paradise, as staff account effective July 4th, 2023. And this came late last week. Board actions requested to approve the resignation of Saxon Andret, our teacher at Turner Intermediate, effective June 20th, 2023. And I think Paul's been with us for about six or seven years. Sax has been with us uh, since 2019. Uh, so they'll both be missed for sure. Yes. Sir. So question, you have an action item with these consent votes for interim board secretary? Yes. It's not It's not listed as a consent vote. It's listed as an action item. Oh, no. Can we change that? Because we did talk about that. Is, 
Is that supposed to be a consent? I'm going to okay. change it to consent. You right can now. do it. Yes. I don't know how you make it that black. <laughs> okay. Okay, I changed it now to consent. Okay, let me. I have to re reload my screen. Thank you for finding that. He's on it already. I'm Jeez. telling you. I know. All right, there we go. Okay. Um, and then we have under section eight, we have um, all the committee uh, action approval items. So the first four are the ones from the um, that we're recommending, uh, Bill Cray is recommending and recommending from uh, <clears throat> the Kelly School Committee. And we have action items five through. Uh, should, five should three five. and four also be consent votes? Because they're also action items. Oh, no. You can blame that on me. I'm a rookie on doing this. So. Okay, I'm going to change those. Okay. Yes, we did talk about those. Good. So, no. We need to get that. But yes, we had talked about those last week. Do you change them? I just changed okay, okay. Are we good with everything else, Jermaine? Yes, it looks like everything else is good. All right. And then we have under the Section I policies, we have seven policies um, to uh, vote on. Uh, and those, again, we talked about those last week. So they would all be under the consent, and let's hope they all are. Consent, consent, consent. I think they're all good there, right? So we're going to jump to item J, which is approval of all the agenda consent items. So board action is requested to approve the following consent items, section G, personnel items 1 through 12, section 8, board committee action items 1 through 12, and section I, policies 1 through 7. Second. Okay. Motion passes. Yay. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We still want to recognize the people we have here. All so. right. I think Alice McVeigh. Yeah. Go, Go ahead and just introduce yourself. I'm Allison. Um, I apply for the art position at Kelly um, Elementary School. So, super excited to be here and to meet all of you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for applying. Yeah. Thank you for coming and joining us. She's yeah. from Greensburg, Seat Hill graduate. Yes, yeah. I worked in Norwin and Kiski and Pentrap. Yeah. Welcome to Logan Bears. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I love your nails. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going on Thursday. I don't know what I'm getting, so maybe we'll have to discuss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. welcome aboard and thanks Thank for you. Tonight. Yes, wonderful to meet you all. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. You. Thank you for sitting yeah. through our board meeting. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, Mom. And you have Mom, too. We have Ethel yeah. so yeah. yes. a Yeah. She brought a cake. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Natalie, Argent I, we always want to say Argentina. Argentina. I know. I get the Argenta. 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 Oh, Argentina. Argentina. So, <laughs> Elm, one of our elementary school teachers, she'll be in which so if you want to um yeah so i graduated from greater lake trove um i went to my local community college westmoreland community college and i do have an associate's criminal justice degree then for a few years after that i worked at adopt village out of lake trove um decided to go back to school i just graduated from pitt um a student taught about a long term short term at the end of the year chem field and now i'm here i'm really excited Thank you. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's so important. Yeah. Very Did important. you have a drama background too? Did you no. Know somebody. <laughs> I said I want to go to that class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Alexandra's not here. We go. 
and Megan Flaherty. Yeah. I'm very excited to be here. Um, I am coming from Presley Ridge, as Dr. Joe stated. Um, so I'm familiar with the building. You know, I ran the Frank program since it opened. Um, and so, yeah. Um, yeah. It's new for us, too. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mom, for attending as well. Mom says good addition. <laughs> <laughs> Mom would know. Right? Yes, I do. Yeah. Why, why, why are we going here? She said good addition. She this said yeah, said a new good addition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mom's also here because Seton Hill wasn't cheap. I know that much. So, congrats, <laughs> <laughs> she got a job. Okay, well, you are uh, welcome to stay if you want for the rest of the meeting, but you don't have to feel compelled to to um, stay, but if you want to see if we vote on all of these other things, we're going to be voting on each one of, this, of the items in Section K individually, because yes. those are new items. So, um, the Waterfront Learning Agreement, four dashes requested for the Waterfront Learning Agreement Renewal uh, for the 23-24 school year to support the district's virtual academy at the cost of 2500 for the annual service charge and $570 per enrolled student to be paid from the SRPs. So moved that. Second, Ashley. Ashley and Taj. There we go. Okay, motion passes. The FMS contract renewal. We're looking to approve the three year contract with FMS to provide facilities management services to the Wilkinsburg School District at a cost of $112,814. For 2324, 116, 198 for 2425, and 119, 684 for 2526 to be paid from the general fund. And that's like a 2.9% increase each year. So move, Debbie. Second, Dennis. Right now you uh oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, motion passes. And I know Ed's just one comment. I know Ed's not here tonight or anything. I appreciate the work that Ed's done over the last year or so. Yes. Um, <laughs> God, probably the least amount of issues, complaints from staff. So nothing's ever perfect. We understand when it comes to this position, but it's been much better and he's very receptive. And I know, I think somebody commented, he's dives right in with our staff right. when, if we're sure. So we appreciate that. Right. So he covers. He covers down yep. when needed. And he's here and around and he knows what's going on. So I guess we appreciate and if you're out there, we appreciate yeah, it. Thank right. you. <laughs> Item three, board action is requested to approve the MOU for the partnership with the Metro Community Health Center uh, to provide mobile health services to families in the Wilkinsburg community. No cost to the district and the approval of the MOU is pending the solicitor approval. So much. Is that Ashley? That was from Monica. Okay. Ashley, second. <laughs> Motion passes. Uh, item four, State of Black Learning Conference. Board action is requested to approve Ashley Comins, Monica Garcia, Joe Malik Maluchnik, and other interested Wilkinsburg School District staff. Hopefully, if you're out there, you're listening. To attend the State of Black Learning Conference at the cost of $450 per person. It's on August 7th through 9th, and it's to be paid by the general fund. So and I think uh, staff, have, has, staff has till this Friday 
to let us know at three o'clock so we can just get those that information to them. I'll second it. Just one tiny discussion thing. I've noticed this a couple other places lately. Uh, the, the the district's acronym um, instead of WSD. If, if, I see it being used as WBSD, like as if Wilkinson Berg were two different yeah. words. So, is that you? Oh, okay. I uh, didn't know. I didn't know. I wouldn't have said anything. It is. Okay. I apologize. Good point. Good catch. A good catch. Yeah. Um, well, I've noticed a couple places. I've so, what's something maybe we want to discuss down the road? But the state does recognize this as Wilkinsburg Borough School District on oh, everything yeah, that we use. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So. I know we've been doing the, and, and I know no, Joblin and I have been talking about it, and everything is Wilkinsburg Borough School District. So I don't know how the it's a board big deal feels. discussion. We've been talking about this for a long time. We have been, but that's a good point, and I don't know. I get it. So if we want to go Wilkins, I don't know how that. You can change the name of the state. Yeah. And that's also like a brand. That's a that's a marketing and branding thing. I right. mean, I even think about that with all the presentations that we do. We should have. A standard look across the board, yeah, across. you know, just like when Joplin came in and yeah. sent the email about our email signatures, like that is just the, you know, low hanging fruit of yeah. being representative of our district. So, and it's a professional. Yeah, it, it it is very it is very much it shows our professionalism. So, so. maybe is that something we want to discuss in marketing? Like he, mm -hmm. like Matt said, we would have to, you know, just let the state know apply that's exactly what that would be and we, so whatever the how the board feels on that i have a um, question how much does it cost does it cost to change me oh, sometimes the cost. state yeah it, it, it is a fee with like aiu so remember we discussed their fee for like the you know basic part-time person but if we no, wanted I mean, like is it for like, the state like if i was to change my last name is it i have to oh you got to change i have to change i have to pay for it yeah. Or right. changing our acronym. But yeah. yeah. I don't think the state charges us. They just got an hour. You, you have to uh, change, <laughs> change our logo as well because the logo says Wilkinsburg School District. That yeah. would be a part of the whole. If we went through that, like with, it would be a rebrand. I mean, technically, they could adjust that, but that just we don't have to do it. It's just that's where that conversation would land. That would be part of the whole communications plan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. These are the things that we want to. Y'all know I'm all about, you know, specifying what we're going to borrow, so don't get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, did we, uh, where are we? Oh, we're on number five. Okay, so board action is recommended to approve the conveyance by quick claim deed of the Wilkinsburg School District's interest in the vacant lot tax parcel ID number 232J155, the Wilkinsburg School District, Borough Wilkinsburg and Allegheny County presently have the title to the vacant property via a prior tax sale. So moved. Second. And this is a discussion. Um, mm -hmm. You brought up less. You yeah. About this last which week is with what, that yeah. Do we have any other... How do we know if we have these properties, these vacant properties, Matt? How would we find out if we have title to these? I would start with MDM. MDM. And if that can I bet be done, you weren't delinquent on the taxes. I'm sure we are. Um, <laughs> and if that doesn't work, I'd have to ask one of our uh, real estate folks whether or how quickly they can pull that up. Because you can do a search online. Yeah, it's probably pulled up. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Did you ever see how you were? Yeah, I had looked. Uh, I had an email actually from you. Right. Uh, Mid June. Um, but I also recall having a phone uh, conversation. I think Rick may have spoken with John Vogel from our office maybe about a week before I got your email. Wait, no, you thought. So that's as much as I can tell you. Uh, somebody contacted our office by phone first, or up, and I don't know whether it was Rick or person who was interested. Okay. Does okay. it matter if I can look deeper into that? Or? I mean, I just think, I, I think we need to know the process. You know, if this comes up again, what is supposed to happen? Is the purchaser supposed to contact the school district or who in the school district would they be reaching out to? Um, and also then I did hear, so the borough recently, they also voted on this and they did pass the purchase um, as well. So, um, and I think the 
borough solicitor is supposed to be contacting you and the other and the county solicitor to figure out who's going to take the lead on this. So that's still not we don't know that, but um, but I would like to figure out you know where it, it, this, if this if this just come about or if it has just been sitting in someone's desk for a year because that's my concern is that I don't want this to happen again. We, should, we don't want to be holding onto properties, you know, if we don't need to. So well, I'll, I'll dig from it. I think it's I didn't know that's where you were headed with that. So I'll ask my uh, colleagues if they recall how that came to their desk. And I'll ask Jen Cersei at MBM. <coughs> Or did you already ask? Her? I talked to her. Okay. Yeah, she didn't know anything about it when I contacted but her. So then not about this, but <clears throat> she, would she be able to find us at what the properties that we own? I don't know that they would have that information, Deb, because okay. they're She's collecting just... against people that own property. They would have no dealing with right, these properties that have already been so upon. Oh, okay. So that's what she said. She said, well, this has nothing to do with us. Oh, okay. She had said she suggested contacting her. So, yeah, I would I retract my earlier comment. <laughs> Yeah. It probably is easier just to go on to that department of uh, whatever it is, property assessments, and just do a search for what is for school district. You know, pull up all the properties. Oh, wow. In fact, I can do that. That, would, that would be interesting. Okay. Deb, yeah, I have a question on this one. Yeah. So, is it, does it need to be, does, do we need to say board actions requested to approve the conveyance by quick claim deed of the book of our interest in the vacant lot, da, 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 but it doesn't say to whom? Should it? Who to whom are we conveying it? Or to whom or to what? It just says we're approving the conveyance of it in yeah. our share. Wouldn't it be to the property owner? It would be. I don't know why that's not. I'd true. rather have it say who we're who we're conveying it to. Yeah, good catch. But I, just I don't have that information handy, but you're right. Uh, I don't know like whether that was uh, part of my uh, email or not. I, the I, I only had the we only had the I had the just, name of the person, but I didn't have the purchase price. But yeah, I mean I can get his name. I have his name is Neil. Forget his last I don't know what offhand, but well, Neil something. Well wait a second, because it says it might be in an email that I it was it was in our it was in Word Docs last week. It's no. not an individual, it's a it's a non profit entity. Well, there was right, an but, address that we took off it because was just the, the address, address was yeah. confusing. Yeah, the right, address yeah. didn't match this. Yeah, well, so I think the that address must have been... belongs to, to Neil, who is the man that's trying to purchase this lot next to his house. Under the nonprofit? So, but he's not going under a nonprofit. No, he's just a person. He's he's asked for help from Sacred well, Place neighborhood. Right. That's a, a good point. That is a good point. And it's also, so yeah. if we convey. We're conveying our interest in that vacant lot. A number of parties have interest, right? Like the yes. county and the borough and so on. So by conveying our interest in it, does that make it complete? Have the others already conveyed yes. their interest? Oh, they have. Okay. Yeah, they only well, they have wait, wait, wait. They've approved. They've approved. So here's what, now. okay, here's what we have. I'm reading it again. Located at 7055, we took that hill, Hill Avenue out mm -hmm. to it. Interest in the vacant lot located that hill to adjacent property owner, is it going to network of international community homes exchange? That's the information that we have. See now, I've never heard of that before. So that's that's the information that you received then from whoever called because I've never heard of that. I, yeah, that's what Matt said to me and that's okay. not, we can put that in there. So is that who it's going to? What is given a name of a person. The information that got. Wait, what is it again? The network of intentional community homes exchange. We want to edit that right now. We, I, I could copy and can. paste that in there. I can just type it in right now to the network. To it says to adjacent property owner network of international community homes exchange. <laughs> um, property owner. To adjacent property owner and that network network of oh i'm sorry not international intentional community owns exchange network of intentional community but what is that homes i don't homes. i feel like we're yeah i don't know well i mean if there's any uncertainty you can always defer this to yeah, third yeah. Time. Yeah. i would rather do that because i don't know anything about that group and i've been yeah, doing right. this for the man you know we are so on yeah. that I don't know that if he's involved in that. He's not. I don't know. I mean, so I feel so, like I'm not voting. You know, I already voted, but I don't want to go that. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think we need to talk about the vote on this because conveying it to 
uh, Wilkinsburg property owner, taxpayer person was great with me, but this organization that we don't know anything about is less great with me. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to change my vote. And, and this and is a person. It's not a person. That's, I think that's why we should table yeah. it because we need to get yeah. clarity, yeah. clarity on the person yeah. versus yeah. the organization. So we need a motion to table Yes. Item K five. So moved. Second. Followed by Aye. 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 Thanks, Ed. Aye. 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 So, Aye. 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 Aye.
for 10 students in each building. Why we see the need for this is this entire year, we've gone without any kind of therapeutic supports for our students because Glade Run has not been able to provide us with a therapist as part of our SAP process. So the Students Assistance, Assistance Program, we have not had any referrals to therapy because there's been no therapeutic support available. So in order to just address that and say, we know what the, we have kids in need. Uh, we have a lot of kids in transition. We have kids in foster care, kids who are supported and followed by CYF, um, kids who are experiencing homelessness, uh, different crises in the, that they have in their families. Um, we know that in order to support our kids, we need to take control of that and be the people who are saying, we're providing this service for our students. So this is one way to do that. Um, I myself made calls to 12 different providers um, in the area um, trying to just say, this is Jeanette Mosso from Wilkinsburg. I'm the special ed director where we're looking for a therapist who can come into our school part time and support our students. I got two calls back and was told caseloads were full. There were waiting lists, but they couldn't even entertain taking on, you know, a group type of caseload that our students would represent. So in order for us to just you know, realize that there is a crisis, just like there is an educational staffing, same thing in behavioral health staffing and mental health supports. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to address this and really take on the responsibility ourselves, this program provides that. I don't have the clinical expertise to supervise if we would hire someone ourselves. So ESS, what they provide is that clinical supervisor, there's a regional director, our clinicians would work with other clinicians in the area um, that ESS is providing, and they would have, you know, again, their collaborative opportunity to be with, you know, fellow therapists and work and be supervised by those individuals. They'll work with us in our buildings. Um, they'll be, you know, the, you know, my direction, the direction of the principals, you know, in the building, just that type of guest host relationship. But we, again, don't have the expertise to supervise their clinical uh, practice. So that's why we need ESS. ESS will do all the hiring, the training. They may or may not have people on board now who would fill these positions, but we talked to them, and as I told the curriculum committee, we wanted people um, who look like our community, people who have experience with urban settings, who have experience with children. So they're going to do, if approved, they're going to do a very, very specific search to find us therapists who will be effective with our children here not only with the children, but they also then offer twice per month family therapy. So if the family's engaged, and these are for kids who do not have IEPs, so this could be for our littlest littlest kids who we haven't had time you know, to see really what they need, to learn about them, even if they would need to be evaluated, but we see that there is some kind of trauma, some kind of behavioral concerns, then the ESS um, therapist will work with them. Um, they'll have individual therapy once a week, they'll have group therapy twice a week, Families will be invited in twice a month, and then they'll also report back to us on the data, and we'll look at the very beginning of the data. What's the student's attendance starting out? What's the discipline record starting out? Has there been time in out-of-school suspension? And how do they improve all those conditions, like keeping the kiddos in school longer, keeping um, them you know, out of the disciplinary process? The big thing that I think is um, the uh, support for our teachers that we have been able to provide with guidance counselors, with behavior support specialists, um, is intervention in the classroom. If a child is in crisis, this person will go and apply nonviolent crisis intervention techniques and tactics to bring the student, you know, back to baseline to give them individual attention um, from a therapeutic standpoint. Now, you can, you know, with our behavior specialist, Mrs. Kibi is a kindergarten teacher. She has a certain way to get you back into the classroom but she's not a therapist, all right? And some of our kids really are in dire need of the kind of support that they can get from a therapist versus what you can get from one of our teachers or one of our guidance counselors, which is day-to-day -day counseling, which is a trusted adult, which is someone you can go to and build a relationship with, but that person is not gonna provide you with any kind of therapeutic, you know, uh, continuous therapeutic support as long as it is needed. And that's the neat part because we might have kids who come in, they're there for 45 days, 60 days, a semester, they work with a clinician, they're having success, they're back in the classroom, they're not having behaviors of concern, then they can be dismissed from the caseload and another student can come onto that person's caseload. So it is a rolling, you know, it's gonna be a rolling admission process and really 
enable us to provide supports that we just don't have right now. So it could end up being more than 10 kids being addressed if it's a rolling process. Exactly. So is it two, is there a total of 20? Are there two therapists with 10 each? Or is it just 10 all together? It's 10 in each building, so it's okay. one therapist in each okay. building, and that's the key part, too, because Mrs. Keeby this year, as the behavior specialist, she was able to go and observe classrooms, talk to kids, work with them individually, but she was back and forth between the buildings. We need someone who's going to build a relationship and be there consistently for those kids because they're not going to have kids in their office every day. They're going to have some small groups. I shouldn't say every class period of every day. They'll have small groups. They'll have some individual work. They'll be doing observations in class, supporting kids, seeing what recommendations they can make to the teachers for how to support these students. So it's it's really, it's just such a neat process for us and it's really so different than what we've been able to provide ourselves, you know, with our teaching staff and, and with our counseling staff trained the way we are. Good, and I want just one more. Is this the type of therapy, I, I, I hear therapy for kids and I immediately think about parental consent or sign off training, is this the type of therapy or intervention that would require in any way a sign off before the work can begin or a notification after it begins between the therapist and the student? Uh, parental consent is required. And okay. so that's something that we, you know what I mean, we would work with ESS and the clinician to um, identify the list of students. That would be from our positive behavior support plan, from our program, from our um, attendance records, kids who, you know, maybe suffer from frequent attendance, frequent tardiness. Um, we would say who are the kids in need, demonstrated behaviors of concern from the discipline, um, you know, records and things like that, identify a list of more than 10 students, and then seek out the parental consent, and then move forward once we have consent. I know in the past, though, and I don't want to be late with this, I'm sorry, but I know we've had situations where either parental consent wasn't granted or one parent would give it and the other parent would revoke it when they found out that it was given. So some of those things can get sticky. So that's why I wondered about us making sure that we do it. Uh -huh. you know. And it, part of it is getting the parents involved too, right? Yes. And right. having the and sessions bringing them the parents. In, right, and offering them that family support. Um, there still is a stigma around special education yes. in a lot of communities where special education, my child is going to be there forever, my child is labeled, my child, you know, doesn't need this, he only needs that little bit of support, but they feel like Again, that pro they don't understand it as a process and a service and a support the way we do. They're concerned about the label and the stigma. So these would be students who don't have to enter into the special education process per se, but they're getting the therapeutic supports. So. And unfortunately, we haven't had Glade Run. They haven't had any personnel to support us and as, as we go through our SAP process. And I don't know, I said it before in the curriculum, or I mean, in, in our yeah, curriculum committee meeting is, if we don't address these social emotional concerns of our kids, this academics is, is yeah. worthless. This is prevention because when I think about it, especially this early, and we're we're after the presentation we just had earlier today with you know our high performing students, it sounds like services like this can help to um, I can't think of the word I'm, I I want to pull out, but our we got pre K to six, you know these right. are babies, and so when we can catch things, see things early. Um, I think that's really important, you know, just overall, we, well, even when we, you know, we want to talk about community violence, like these are the things that can, you know, ultimately help support minimizing that. And I think that's really important that we do that for our kids. I did have a question though, because this isn't based here. So how are they finding their therapists um, locally that are going to be present in our schools if current places here can't do that yeah just the way you would do an online search and i think looking at the cost i mean they're you know they're bringing people in at a higher you know That's higher right. level and yeah. looking for experience and looking for credentials mm -hmm. that fit what we need but also realizing that we need someone who's going to commit to us for multiple school years for the mm -hmm. balance of the contract there's no sense in developing these great relationships and having to you know replace people. Um, they've had a lot of success in the Harrisburg School District um, in an urban setting with very challenging, um, you know, school settings and also behaviors and things like that. And they showed great data that I, you know, shared yeah. with the curriculum committee yeah. Yeah. on yeah. just reducing, you know, reducing truancy, um, increasing attendance, um, reducing disciplinary referrals. Uh, we want our first line of defense to be a support to a student, not a discipline referral. Yeah. Like you should, if you go to, if you're going to the office, you should be going to see Ms. Jordan, 
you know, or someone for support, you shouldn't be going, you know, for the disciplinary referral. We need to know what's happening first. And this is one avenue for us to find out what's happening. How can we support before we worry about the disciplinary, you know, the disciplinary referral. And the, the thing that I absolutely loved about it, because you know where we are with the accountability. We don't know how any of our things work, how accountable or whatever. We will know if this is effective or not because of the data that they're going to yeah. give us. And the data that they that you shared with us from other places that were successful, it was if we could get half of, of the success mm -hmm. there, I think we would be, it would be well worth, worth mm -hmm. it because this is really, I think what we have needed all along, we don't need just discipline them and yeah. send them to the principal's sure. office. Yeah. We need to support them, find out what the issues are and support them. And that's what I believe that this this would do. And it'll mm -hmm. help our classrooms overall. Our teachers yeah. will have support that. Right. They can focus on teaching yeah. rather right. than right. right. When, when those numbers, I had the same questions. Then when when you see the the number and, yeah. and what we is there anything we can do differently when it came <clears> at me? But then starting to bet it, listen to the, the presentation of you know from from Melanie, mm -hmm. um, and the data is going to be important. Um, but that I had the yeah, same I'm not opposed to it at all. I mean, I'm just sort of sure. kind of shocked at the price and <laughs> what it's going to cost for. Right. Student. I mean, it's necessary, but I just didn't know if there were competitive programs. And you know, we did talk about that in the committee. Uh, we looked at the um, mm -hmm. Chill project through AHN. That's a multi-year process of applying um, and you know getting approved and everything. Um, and then also the Cool Zone. If you've heard of the Cool Zone, um, they're like the igloo. It's with the um, Penguins Foundation. Um, there's one at Hosanna House. <laughs> so close, but yet so far. So, um, you know, it's, it's just something that wasn't, you know, didn't come here. There's also Woodland Hills and things like that. This was expedient. It lets us take control of the, you know, again, very pressing needs that we see for our kids. Um, and I'm thinking especially at Kelly. It's so important with our little students. You know, with some of the older kids, they have layers of support. They've worked with behavior specialists. Um, we'll have a social worker on staff for next year. Uh, we have Mrs. Keeby. Uh, we have guidance counselors and everything like that. Some of our littlest kids need, you know, more nurturing and from someone who is experienced with children and children's behavioral health. Yeah. And that's that's like the missing yeah. piece for us. We love kids. We know how to educate kids. We take care of kids. We're very nurturing with our kids and stuff. But there's that missing piece where we're going to help kids get better. You know. So uh, uh, something for future reference. You said something that makes me think about it. I hope we can circle back sometime. You talked about the stigma of special education, all right? And I, that's something I wish we could. We're never going to do uh, completely get rid of that, perhaps. But kids come into special ed and go out once their needs have been met. You right. know what I mean? It's not, as you said, it's not a forever thing for every kid. And mm -hmm. it would be great if we could try some ways to emphasize the positivity of special ed programs and the richness that that brings to our kids who have, who have different needs. They're just different needs, that's all. Right. That's, that's, all. Ways that's of something learning. that we just circle back to sometime. And I also want to comment also, I want to thank you in what seems like a really short time about your grasp of our kids and the programs and the needs and everything going on here. It's really gratifying to have you here. I, I, agree. Thank you. I, I agree. agree. I agree. I, I love being here. I'm very happy here. So I say that, I'd be like, ooh, this one. Yeah. 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 Perhaps. Oh, no, it's just, our timeline special education it's a service not a place so we don't we don't put kids in special education yeah i mean it's a service we provide so if we continue to think that and talk to our parents about that and our families about that we provide a service that's it we're that's going to educate great. your child a little bit differently um in a more you know what i mean a different way to help him or her do his best and reach the same potential that the other children have and so it's a that. service not a place and i want to also just add i think when we talk about special education even when we're thinking about gifted programs education and how students learn is just different. Mm -hmm. So although a child may be in a titled special education, we can even think into any individual classrooms, teachers know how each of their student is learning. And so right, if we can continue to talk to our families like that, increase what how we're you know engaging with our parents, mm -hmm. um, because you're right, nobody wants to hear about my kid needs special education, or if my kid even needs to repeat a grade when we're thinking about kindergartners, first graders, and second graders, that is the time that we should be encouraging our families to say, hey, it's it's not a bad thing if we need to make sure we're tightening up mm -hmm. on our kids can read by third grade, our kids know how to do their math, those basic skills. So 
Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can I just have one, one last thing about this conversation about special education, talking about the parents and the stigma and that sort of thing. But um, from just overhearing conversations from kids, on, kids I've been around, um, a lot of times the kids are perpetuating this as well, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these kids that are in special education get bullied. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to make fun of my brother for being in special education. So you know what I mean? The kids just, you just, you don't think anything. But I think we need to maybe also start thinking how can we get our kids to understand that other kids have special ways of learning or there's different things in the way that all kids. Right. Yeah, all kids learn differently. That message, mm -hmm. you know, just like everybody's different and people are different, you know, cultures and colors and everything else, but also learning abilities are all different. Absolutely. Um, and learning styles. Because then, because they won't have that. I mean, there's literally, you know, still tease each other about the kids. And so it doesn't help, I think. And so when you start at a young age, absolutely. Them. And one way around that is pushing that's teachers into the classroom. So we'll have a special education teacher push into the classroom, and she doesn't say, you know, student A, B, C, and D, come sit with me. Those kids are mixed with the other kids. They're blended together. They're going to have a partner who may or may not have an IEP. They're going to have a partner who may have an IEP in a different area or, you know, a different subject area even. So pushing in and co-teaching, that's the next adopter motion. Yeah. I've been talking about that. That's yeah. the next place that we need to go yeah. when it's a good fit for kids. Mm -hmm. But we've had success with that this year. But there's a lot of training involved in that and getting the teachers working as partners yeah. so the special education teacher is in there as an equal partner with the gen ed teacher. But that's one way to alleviate some of that stigma that, you know what, Ms. Winwood was able to help me too. She's helping all the sixth grade kids. She's not just helping certain kids. Mm -hmm. So that's just baby well, steps there. toward that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I echo what, what Ed said about the in Nebraska that you had over the last year and yeah. coming in with not having a full staff. We so appreciate yeah, what you've you. done and what you've brought to us. Uh, because yeah, I, I truly it. believe the discussion at the curriculum committee was very rich and, mm -hmm. you know, it was very helpful. And That's just favorite committee. I love yeah. the curriculum it was, committee. It was exciting <laughs> to, to hear that this is, somebody tell us what I do. we need. Yes. yes, this is a problem and this is how we can fix it. So, yeah, thank yes. you. And it's, Dr. Miller, he found it. I have to give him credit. He found it. He said, this is a great program. I think you'll know how we will use it. And I mean, so he found it at one of the, was it the, the PLUS conference or? Yeah, it was at the PLUS Pennsylvania League of Urban Schools. Yeah. Um, so it's just a small group of us superintendents. And when I send this to Summer, Jeanette, I send stuff, I let them, that because she's the expert in special ed. I'm not the expert in special ed. Or, and it's not even a special ed program. It's a student service program. Right? Yeah. It's not a special ed, student service. Yeah. She's, this is outside of her job responsibilities really but it's a student service program but i know she understands that stuff a little bit better than me so i just push if they if it doesn't work it doesn't work we're excited to have somebody in your place that gives a damn about the kids in this district you know what i mean and really cares about the kids and the families and, and identifying what the needs are and then finding programs and supports that you know we can put in place yeah. so yeah it might cost us a lot but i feel like if i'm district like ours this is something we definitely need and we have so to try it yeah, yeah it's worth thank you and yeah. when yeah. we yeah. have well, those, funds will pay for it yes right now so right good. <laughs> and when we have the good outcomes then we share and we talk about that because that is that is the purpose mm -hmm. we also want our community to feel you know confident in our district and the choices that we're making through our leadership and our administrators so um yeah thanks and part of our answer funds has to go to programs like this so it's yeah. required mm -hmm. i think All we right. only have one vote denny oh vote. i didn't even know what's up i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that. it's, yes. all right so we have the motion passed and we have um, item number 10 is we're looking to uh, report actions requested to approve the non-renewal of the employment agreement uh, for Kelly Hanna for the agreement Ms. Hanna's employment will end this of August 31st, 2023. I just wanted to make a comment that we appreciate everything Kelly Hanna. We want to move it first. Yeah. Hmm? Well, if you want to move it first and then. Yeah, then we can have a discussion. <laughs> so moved, Ashley. Second. Second. Discussion. So I, you know, I agree. I think uh, I, I will definitely like to say thank Kelly for what she's been able to do 
um, for the district through the pandemic, you know, uh, the, the bringing the authorship program um, and, you know, getting us through the, the time that we needed um, while she was here. So, yes. Our shoe carnival. Yes, the shoe carnival. Some things that aren't going away. So I always say when you leave a legacy, I, I, my old superintendent said, when you leave a legacy, if it's still there after you're gone, right? Those two programs are still going to be here. Mm -hmm. So, well, we appreciate that. The motion passes. Okay. Um, are there any? We don't have any other public care rights. So no other comments on non-agenda items, or does any board member comments? Thank you for approving the conference for the State of Black Learning. Um, I'll make sure when we come back that I have some good information to share. And um, yeah. Ashley, so, I'm sure you might think about it anyway. Keep your ears open for somebody who might be good to bring in sometime for some board PD exactly. on a Saturday morning or something for us. Exactly. That's you know? exactly um, what I want to see. Yes. So I think that would be really great. We almost did that with Dr. Iverson, but it was going to be staff, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But so it can be staff or us, you know what I mean? Uh, but a learning opportunity at PD, that would be really great. And I really hope that we get responses to your email the invitation to faculty and other staff people. Yes, we hope really that they would. Do. So I'll be looking forward to hearing about that. Yeah, and I guess too, I, I'm glad you made that point. I'll let you know how many. Sure. Yeah, because I do know that, you know, it gets a little sticky with public education and you know, our, our battle, I think, from a state perspective when it comes to public schools and charter schools, but I do just want to make a point and note regarding this conference, um, although it does have, um, you know, sponsorship from local charter schools there, and in previous conferences, I have also seen presenters and speakers come and be critical of how charter schools are impacting public schools like ours. So I do just want to, as a board member and full supporter of, you know, our public schools and our, our educators, that the purpose of, you know, us being intentional about how we're educating our black children in this region is just important that we talk about because we know what the data is showing us when we think about how black children are being educated and the inequities and the disparities that we're seeing. And so whether it's our implicit or explicit biases that we may have, and all people have them, I think these are good opportunities for us to just self-reflect and make sure that we're not um, operating in our silos and our tunnel vision of what we think is best is bigger than any individual. And if we're always, like we say, making the best choices for our kids, um, uh, an opportunity like this conference you know, outside of the, the presenters and the speakers, which of course I'm so excited about um, Nikki Giovanni. So I think, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity to network, build, connect with other educators, other, you know, administrators, board members. Um, you know, it's the time to talk about the things that are good, the things that are bad, and the things that we can just do better. So. Just want to make that point because I am in so much support of our school, our teachers. I know you are doing the some of the hardest work. So, in no way is the this conference a message that you know um, charter schools are doing it better. That's not the message. The message is our kids. The message is how are we educating our black children in a system that doesn't want to ultimately see them win. So, just wanted to make that point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, this is, a, I guess, for Matt, a technical question here. Um, we, uh, Michael Rose was not able to attend tonight. Do we excuse him now, or do I recess and excuse him? You can excuse him now. Okay. Board Action is requested to excuse uh, Michael Rose from this evening's meeting. So moved. Second. He did let you know he couldn't attend, right? Yes, yes. Uh, do we vote? Is there a vote? Yes, it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then we go, I hope this is the right motion. Uh, board action is requested to recess the meeting to Thursday, June 29th at 5 p.m. So I didn't Wait for me to do something. Yeah, a second. second. Oh, I'll second. Oh. I want to thank the solicitor for this clever you know, recess thing. <laughs> <laughs> thing. I, mean, really, I don't think I've ever done this before. I know. This so I, I don't get to hit the hit the no, 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 recess. Yeah, recess. So now we right. can we cut off our our, our lab? Uh yes. <laughs> We're still live, folks. Yeah, we are going to have a, a hopefully a short executive session.